for using the angle grinder. First and foremost, you want to be aware of the risks that you're facing. Any loose clothing or jewelry needs to be tucked in or taken off. You want to visually inspect the tool and make sure you have an interior mounting flange. The grit part faces out. It fully engages with the interior part. This piece will mount in a different direction depending on which disc you're using. If you're using a thicker disc like this, disc goes with concavity out. And then this inner flange, the larger part, will face in. You'll hand tighten it initially. This button locks as you spin. Then you're going to tighten with the wrench a little bit more. But not a ton. It'll tighten as you use it. To loosen it, you do it in reverse. If instead you're using a thinner cutoff disc, this will mount in a different way. Because the interior flange sticks almost all the way through the disc, we have to reverse this. And you want the metal, if it's marked, like if it's concave, then it'll be obvious which end goes out. But if it's thinner like this and it's not really marked, you want the metal part engaging with the nut. So the metal facing out, and then the nut will be the reverse of on the thicker disc so that we can tighten it all the way against. And you'll tighten it just a bit. That's how you mount a disc. Next, with the risk assessment, other stuff to be aware of, you want to visually inspect both the tool and the disc, particularly on thinner discs, they can crack, which means they need to go immediately in the garbage. Discs are cheap and they explode all over the place if you try to run them when they're cracked. Later on, when you turn the grinder on, you want to make sure that it's the same distance and radius as well, because it can crack on either axis. Um, this is metal that we're grinding and producing very hot sparks. You want to be aware of what direction you're going in. You don't want to have anything flammable nearby. You need to make sure at the very least that you have a face mask on. Should wear hearing protection as well and offer it to anyone else nearby. And gloves are required as well. After you're shooting sparks with this, you want to wait at least 30 minutes to make sure that there's no slowly smoldering fire anywhere. Um, control of the tool. This is small and spinning really fast with a bunch of torque. Do not set it down and take your hands off of it until it is fully done spinning. Depending on the specific angle grinder, the lock will work in different ways. So you want to be aware of how it works on your specific, even across these two models, the lock works a little differently. So you can make a mistake and get it locked on. You want to make sure that you know how to release it before you're using the tool. And you want to make sure that you really have clamped in tightly your workpiece. You can have your workpiece fly off if it's not clamped tightly enough. You can have, again, small chunks of metal flying off of it. And you want to stay out of plane with the disc, particularly on the thinner disc, because if it breaks, you want it to hit not you and not other people, just the wall or something. After you've got all your protective gear, you've checked out the tool thoroughly, you've let anybody else around know what you're doing and offered them protection, getting them at least to wear eye protection if they're nearby. We've checked the disc to make sure it's not cracked. We've mounted it fully. Now we can plug in our tool, making sure that the lock is off. And with our gloves on, anything flammable out of the way. Grinding. I'm going to just fire it up first and off to make sure that I know how the lock works. Make sure that everything looks okay. This disc looks brand new, no cracks or anything. And this is a cutting disc, so like if we want to cut a slit here. Um, we want to make sure the most dangerous part, the point, part where the disc is most likely to break, is right when you engage with the material. So you want to make sure that this is that you're particularly cautious then one and two that you're all the way up to speed before engaging the tool with the material. So you want to like you'll hear you'll get used to hearing it, but for starters, just wait like to a count of two or three seconds 
before you engage with the material. Grinding. So we wait till the tool's fully spun down. You also want to make sure that you don't turn the tool off until you disengage from the material. That's another point at which it can break.